Hey everybody and welcome back to the shop. Today we're working on the GMD 500 spindle. Uh, if you've watched my other video where I replaced that spindle, I kind of told you that I had uh, ordered some bearings to replace the uh, unsealed bearings that I had put in these spindles. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So on these spindles, uh, according to Coon, these are not serviceable. But you can take them apart. You just take this nut off and press this shaft out. This shaft and this top piece is one part. It'll press out and the bearing is captured in this part of it. So then you just press the, the bearing in and out. So uh, a few years ago I rebuilt a bunch of these spindles. And I the only thing I could get at the time was an unsealed bearing. The bearings that come in these from the factory are sealed. So I got to looking online and... Uh, According to what I understand, uh, a Peugeot and some more French vehicle front wheel, uh, front wheel bearings are the exact same size and they're sealed. But the problem is you can't get them over here. They just, you got to order them from overseas, ship them in. So I got looking on Amazon and I, I just put in the size it was and I can't remember what the size is right now. You can search through the community forums that's where i found it and i come up with this it's from uh, auto round and uh so i'll tell you if i can find the part number i'll tell you what it is i don't believe there's a part number on there but i'll definitely stick a link to it in the description so this bearing it looks more like a shielded bearing than a sealed bearing but I believe it is both. I believe there's a, I believe there's a rubber seal right here. And of course you got a shield here. And that's very important on these bearings because they're, they're, they come pre-greased. But you've got gear oil inside that housing. And that gear oil will work their way through that grease and then they'll leak. And they usually leak right in this area right here. Alright, so... Without a sealed or shielded bearing, uh, these bearings are going to start leaking within a couple of years. I think this will last about two years, maybe three since I rebuilt that mower. So uh, I don't even see a part number on this bearing. But I definitely will give you the link in the description because I, I did order them from Amazon. Can't believe there's no part number on this box. I'll put all as much information as I can down there in the description and hopefully this will work and these bearings are comparable in cost to a non-sealed bearing which around here was pretty expensive uh, just for the non-sealed ones I think they were about 50 or 60 dollars a piece but to replace this spindle I believe that guy told me they were 300 bucks for that assembly right there and uh, I just can't see putting three hundred dollars in something when you can pretty easily change the bearing out in it and you know I've got an extra one I put my spare on which was an older one but you know I got I got one extra and I, I'm gonna put this bearing in there so the first thing I gotta do is take it out to the shop press and press this uh, shaft out and uh, I get it apart I'll bring it back and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. So first thing we got to do is we got to get this nut and this gear off. Right, I apologize for the camera, guys. It's uh, very humid in here today. We had a lot of rain yesterday. And uh, it's about 80 degrees. It's humid. So this is an inch and five eighths to fit this nut. I got it in the vise. And the vise won't turn. And get this thing off here. It's pretty tight. It's almost like a lock nut. So if you don't have an inch and five eight socket, I believe you can use a a fifteen inch, a fifteen inch crescent. But of course, it's better that if you have a socket. And this gear just lifts right off here. It's just spline to the splines in the shaft here. You can see the bearings in this bearing. I definitely have a unsealed bearing. And I'm running this fan trying to. Uh, Trying to help this humidity out, but I don't know how it's going to do. Anyway, I got to go press this out, and I'll bring you back. All right, so it came apart pretty easy, but I ran into a little bit of issue. Notice this is a double ball bearing, bearing, and uh, 
and you know what happened to the other part of this inner race but part of it stuck to the shaft here I think we can get off the other half I guess just fell out but the problem is now we gotta get this snap made a snap ring find the end of it here there you kind of see that notch that is not a typical snap ring it does it does not have holes in it uh, it's just a gun you got to get behind and get out that's probably the hardest part of the job is getting that daggum snap ring out of there to get the bearing out so I'm gonna work on that and we'll get this off hopefully I can get a chisel behind there and just kind of get it loosened up and should come off these are not pressed too hard I don't believe so uh, let me work on this snap ring and uh, I'll bring it back. Alright, so I got the snap ring off. And uh, basically what I did, and I, I didn't realize I had done it before, but I drilled a little hole. I was going to try to drill a hole on each side. This one didn't want to drill, but I got a hole in it, and when I got it out, I realized it already had a hole in it. Let me see. There's two holes. I mean, I drilled within a millimeter of that second one, or the first one, but uh, anyway, if you can get something in there and hook it, it's a lot easier to get out, so I just take a little bit of drill bit, and all right, so on this side, there's nothing, there's no cutouts here to get on the back side of that race, so I just found the biggest socket I got with the inch seven eighths, it fits pretty good, and I'm just going to, I'm going to try to knock it out, and it's probably just going to blow the ball bearings out, but I really ain't got no other, I don't believe I've got no other choice here. That's about what I figured. It's just gonna blow the ball bearings out of it. Well, we got this stuff out. Maybe I can get a hold to it now. You see these? We got this little plastic, but that don't that don't protect against that oil getting in there. That's one good thing about buying these cheap uh, three-quarter drive socket sets is I rarely ever use them for nuts, but I use them a lot for stuff like this. And there it is. And I'm going to take this chisel. I'm going to try to get right behind this thing. I'm going to drop my chisel. I didn't realize there's a kind of a hump there. You really can't chisel that hump. Not without damaging it. Ooh, I don't know if I got that thing off of that pry bar. I'm surprised it came that far, to be honest with you. You see this, you see this little lip right here? Zoom in on it. Lip. So that's what I was trying to chisel into. I got it just enough I could get that pry bar behind it, but uh, I don't think you're going to chisel behind that lip too good. But so look at the shaft. The shaft's in pretty good shape. What I'll do, I'll go ahead and wash this again. And uh, compare the let's compare the bearings size-wise, and make sure this thing's gonna be compatible. I don't have any digital calipers. This is old school. They ain't very accurate. This is old Syntex or something. They ain't very. It ain't great. But just compare it side by side. But, uh, Feel like it's about the same size, so let's see what they are. Alright, so 
looking like 1.22 inches. 1.2. Well, that's a little less than 0 0.220. Uh, I'm gonna say 1.220. Oh man, this is gonna be a little thicker. Well, let me go up and grab it right here. That's one point, almost 1.30 thickness wise. All right, in this way. Looking at 2.832. Maybe might be a little bit bigger than that. Might be just a hair thicker. Not much. A few thousands. It's definitely a little taller though. There's. Yep. Maybe too tall. Looking at the old one here. See the old one. It fits almost, by the time it goes over this little ledge right here, it's almost perfect. This one, I don't believe she's gonna work. Too big, I don't believe. And this thing here is gonna go on. It's going to seat. Let's see where it seats at. Alright, so that's basically as deep as that gear is going to go. So we got this much room. It's just going to be a, a few thousands, a few thousands too, too wide, but I wonder if by the time it seats back against this if it won't fit okay, so I'm going to try it anyway. I done bought these things and hell, I hate not to at least try it. You know, I can tell it's too wider. So let me clean this up. We'll get this thing pressed in. Alright, so as I clean these up, I realized that uh, this thing has some damage in it. You can see that groove right there. It looks like I don't know what happened right there. But there's definitely, definitely some damage. The rest of it, other than that little spot, it's about half around almost looks like something dug into it on that side right there and on the shaft there's a little bit of damage right here so uh, I don't know if I did that when I was pulling it or if it's just some erosion but I, I definitely feel something I have to take a little sandpaper and uh sand that spot there down so i think other than that this is just a, really a test and if it works it'll be a spare and like i said hopefully the rest of them won't get no trouble for a little while okay i've got it all pressed together uh but don't do like i did and get about halfway pressed in and realize you forgot that snap ring in there and then have to press this back off because the uh these little shields they, they tend to want to stay 
on that shaft and then when I, I got snap I pressed the bearing in put the snap ring in press this in it pushed this shield out so then I had to come back and press the sh shield and enter race back in for that so I don't know how good this is going to work to be honest with you But it almost seats all the way. As far as I know, there's no uh, wash or anything goes on this nut. Let's tighten this nut up. That nut and shaft is flush. It's good and tight. No doubt about it, it's tight. There ain't no play in it. Uh, I just wonder how much gap is supposed to be between here and here. That's the, only, that's the only thing I need to measure. I don't have an original to measure by to see if this is too much gap. I don't want this thing running you know, way off the gears in there. Power the gears up. It'd be worth spending three hundred dollars for a new one versus tearing gears up. Right, so anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully we'll figure this out next year because I'm gonna put this away for the winter, and next spring we'll get the mower out and we'll swap this one for that old spare I throwed in there a few weeks ago, and we'll kind of see what the differences are. And we may, may, we may run it or we may not run it. Don't know yet. So until then, thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't.